Joining us right now, it's my pleasure to introduce to you Andy Tay. Andy, thanks for being with Hi. us. I want to first congratulate you on being named the inaugural recipient of the MRS Bulletin Postdoctoral Prize. You said you were surprised when yes, you found I was out surprised. You why. Yeah, so um, my research, we, I'm focused really on the mechanical biology and neuroscience. Uh, but in the last phase of my PhD, I, um, I, in postdoc, I decided to go into uh, more of the material science. And in fact, this is my first meeting in MRS. So I was really surprised that I got this award. And so far, so good. Yes. <laughs> now, one of the primary components of this prize is an interest in science writing and communication. Yes. Tell us about the importance of not just being a good researcher, but a good communicator in regards to that research. Yeah, so I started science communication because of my family. So mm -hmm. um, after I started my PhD, I realized that my parents were still thinking that I was working on cancer science while I've already switched fields. So um, this motivated me to actually better explain my science to my parents. Um, they received very formal, uh, little education, uh, very little formal education, but they have been very supportive. So I wanted to let them know what I was doing. And along the way, I realized that um, in science communication, there are two two problems that I see. Yeah. Firstly, they are not sufficient uh, conversation about certain topics, for example, in material science. Whereas in some topics like food science, there has been so much conversations, but a lot of these dialogues have uh, been very inaccurate. So I thought that as researchers, we can advocate for evidence science com uh, base science communications. Yeah. That makes absolute perfect sense. Now, some of your writing efforts focused on explaining neuroscience to high school students. Yes. Tell us about the importance of creating an interest in science among the younger students. Yeah, I feel that it's important for uh, young researchers to be a role model for uh, young students as well. So I started having an interest in science um, in middle school and it continued through high school and college. Um, and that is why I uh, volunteer with Neurite West, uh, which is uh, where I high school students they post questions and I've received many interesting questions like uh, whether brain transplant is possible, how is neuroscience compatible with robotics and uh, with these I try to mentor and teach them what mm -hmm. I know and hopefully inspire them to uh, consider an education or career in STEM in the future. Is this where you find the communications is very important because you're not speaking as a scientist per se, you're, you're talking to high yes. school kids. Yes, and it's important because uh, we need to understand that they do not have like the full knowledge where right. we are talking about very um, deep topics. So it's important um, to try to think of ways to simplify things and make it accessible to them. Uh, your research focuses on something called nanostraws. Yeah. So tell me what you've been working on and what you're working on towards that in right. your research. So basically, we are trying to use nanostraw to improve uh, regenerative medicine, uh, primarily for heart diseases. Oh. So um, the World Health Organization uh, uh, stated that um, cardiovascular diseases claims the most number of lives every year. But um, many of these heart cells that we use for transplantation, they are not uniform. Like they have many different properties um, after dif differentiation. So we wanted to use nano straws to, um, what happens is that we use nanotechnology to um, introduce these nano straws. And we try to uh, use nano straws to deliver uh, or to extract certain cellular content uh, so that we can improve um, differentiation of stem cells into heart cells for transplantation. Well, you're a very good communicator because I understood exactly what you just said. Oh, thank you. <laughs> sure. So how do you then expect to incorporate your communication skills as your career progresses? Um, there are three main ways that I'm doing that. Uh, firstly, it's through uh, volunteering. So I've been exploring a lot of uh, methods for science communication. So I, uh, I'm currently now in Sydney and I receive a fellowship from the Museum of Applied Arts and Sciences. So I'm trying to apply certain concepts from sensory neuroscience, for example, uh, adaptation and mm. saturation. So what this means is that sometimes we receive a lot of stimuli from museum exhibits, but it may, sometimes it may be too excessive that you reduce our visitors' experience. So we are try, I'm trying to apply these concepts to see how we can better design exhibits to improve the visitors' experience. Very good. And um, secondly, it will definitely be more in like cross-cultural communications. Right. Um, I know that science communication is not absolute. You can be a good communicator in the US, but when you go to Japan, it may be very different. So every year I try to spend three to four months overseas. Last year I went to Germany and this year in Japan and Australia to learn about how um, different cultures communicate differently. And I think this will be important um, as I interact with overseas colleagues and students in the future. And definitely science communication is important for our grant writing, which I'll 
we'll probably be doing a lot in the future. I'm sure you're going to be doing a whole lot in the future. I see a very successful career oh, thank you. in your future, Andy Tay. A pleasure to meet you and congratulations again. Thank you.